What's the next component relative to cost? Cash practice. I gave the analogy today. Some people go, well, I'll just charge cash. I'm just going to do a cash practice. I told you what happened with the student that I talked about. The student goes, well, I'm going to have a cash practice. I'm just going to charge what I want. I go, okay. Well, let me ask you a question. If you have insurance, and I'm a provider that does not accept your insurance and makes you pay out of pocket, and this provider accepts your insurance, who are you going to? Now, the only way you'll come to me is if what exists? A very strong relationship. Very strong. That's the only way. The mass market's going to go to who? The person who accepts the insurance. Do you know what you're doing to yourself by not accepting insurance? Accepting insurance and you, your office accepting insurance and billing is standard. It's industry standard. It's like you buying a car and there not being a bumper on it. You're going, wait a minute, I bought the car. Everybody else puts a bumper on it. You should put a bumper on it. That's the standard now. So guess what the masses expect? That. So when you do try to make them pay out of their pocket, guess how much resistance you get? And guess where they go? Elsewhere. Because what would you do if you were in those shoes? Somebody accepted your insurance and you just had to pay your copay versus somebody who didn't accept it at all and you had to pay cash. Who are you going to? That person or somebody over here who accepts it and you only have to pay their copay. Which one are you going to? You got it. And guess what the masses do? When you stop accepting the insurance, your practice will drop 60% within 30 to 60 days. Because how many of you people want to pay cash when you go to the dentist? When you go, if you have insurance, what do you want, them to, what do you want that dentist to do? That's right. And what is the only amount that you want to pay? Copay. And when you try to do anything different, what's that called? It's called going against market forces. Good luck. Yeah. Now, if you're newly practicing, you're not on all the insurance carriers, how do you, how you go about doing that? You got a problem. That's a possible problem. There's a thing called out of network benefits. Sometimes, even if you're not on a policy, they have a thing like if you're on the policy, maybe there's just a copay. But if you're not on the policy, there might be like a $200 or $250 deduct deductible and a copay. So, the only chance is really, to be honest with you, is if the insurance has out of network benefits. If they have an insurance policy, like an HMO, and it's for these doctors, guess where they go? You're out of luck. Now you have to try to convert a cash patient. You have to try to get this person to pay cash when they have insurance to pay for it over here with this provider. If that scenario was in your face, what would you do? If that, or you mean if I was the patient? You're the patient. Yeah. You have to pay me cash or use your insurance over here. What are you going to do? Over there. That's right. Yeah, if there's not out of network benefits possible and you can't get in, that's another problem. Yeah. And then CPT codes. When you bill your diagnostic codes and your treatment codes, your ICDA and your CPT codes, your, those are your diagnostic and treatment codes. You can't just bill whatever code you want. You can't look at this code and go, oh, I can get $80 for this code. Versus 60 for this code, I'm going to bill that code. You think that might happen in chiropractic? It's called insurance fraud. <laughs> and there's three components with, an, with a CPT code that have to be fulfilled. One is a time with the patient. One is a cognitive component. Third one is level of complexity. So it is, it is outlaid. If you do this code, you have to give this amount of information, time, level complexity with that code. If you don't, what's it called? Fraud. And when you put it in the mail, what's it called? Mail fraud. Now, guess what happens when you guys get market forces, a small percentage of people, they don't stay very long, guess what you guys start doing to the bill? Padding it. You start padding it. You start doing this, doing that, adding to it. Why do you why do you do that now? It's to pay your bills. It's to pay your bills. You're stressed now. You know how many times I've seen that in chiropractic? By the way, it's not just chiropractic. 
That's the number one reason that people start padding their bills. They don't get enough business, so what do they do to try to compensate for revenue? Pad the bill. And now they start going into insurance fraud. So those are some cost issues. Any questions about cost issues? You have to know these things. That's one of the components that's going to be making money. That's a financial department component. It's not sales and marketing. You have to know something about finances. What's the last one? Overhead. That's the fourth component. Okay? Remember there were four components on how you make money? We've, we've now talked about three. We've talked about getting new business and what will happen with market, what can happen, what you do, what they do. We've talked about sales. We've talked about marketing topically. We've talked about retention and how to change it versus what they want to do. We've talked about cost factors. Now we're talking about overhead. Guess who has to know every one of them? You. You are the president, CEO of your company. You have to know all of this. So the last one is overhead. What is the average for overhead? The national average according to the ACA is $11,400. According to chiropractic economics, that's a month. That's a month. Chiropractic economics is a little over $14,000. The overhead is 50% according to the ACA, 70% according to chiropractic economics. That's the overhead. Those are the industry standards. That's the real world. It costs money to make money. So, what is, the, what is the number of patient visits a week? 108 patient visits a week, national average. Um, eight, there, there, there's, there's different types of overhead. There's not one reason for an overhead. There's eight different types of overhead. I don't have time to go into each eight different type of overhead. Here's what I will go into. What are the three main reasons for high overhead? I'll share those with you. What's the number one reason for high overhead? Leases. You get tied into a lease program that is monthly. Leases. So, you come out of school and you start signing leases for all this equipment. Well, what happens to the amount of money you need to generate every month? It increases and what happens the next month? It's still there. It's still there in the next month and the next month. That's the number one reason for high overhead, leases. Getting involved with too many leases are too high leases. Number two, space. You get too much space. How much space do you really need? 1,200 square feet, give or take 200. That's how much square feet you really need to do as many patients really as you physically can. What's the major problem that you guys do with space? You get too much space. Number four, number three, labor. You do one of two things and they're both extreme. You either start with no staff. How do you plan on doing that? I want to ask you, I have chiropractors that actually are going to try to start a business with no staff. I want to ask you a question. You go into your dental office. There's no receptionist in there. He's answering the phone, scheduling appointments, going back and forth. What do you need to do to, this, to his credibility? What just happened to your trust in him? Do you understand this? Don't run a service industry without staff. Why do, you not, why do you try to start without a staff member? Cheap. What are you saying to everybody that comes in your door? You're cheap. What can you not say in a service industry? You're cheap. Then you do the opposite. You'll try to hire too many staff or you'll try to get free labor. Who's free labor? Your spouse. Now, let me tell you, you talk about an explosive situation, get these market forces, see 20, 40 new pati or patient visits a week, not do very well financially, and be stuck with your wife all day. <laughs> and at night. There will not be pleasant conversations going on. You laugh. So, here's the, here's the general rule. Here's the general rule.